Hi and welcome to this Onshape tutorial. Today we're going to look at the sheet metal features in Onshape. We're going to start by looking at this design in the top right hand corner and with this uh, tab active you can see the range of different challenges we're going to work through. You can also click on the YouTube link or the icon to link to the YouTube tutorials and you've also got here a tab that gives you access to other resources in tutorials and okay the channel which has got everything to do with on shape on there so if we have a look at the tab here we can see the design we're going to have a go at creating so if we uh, roll back and go and uh, go back in time we can see how we've created this so we started off with a simple sketch and that's 100 millimeters okay by 100 millimeters and that's on the top okay work point so we're going to click on plus we're going to create a part studio. We'll wait that to, for that to load and then we can right click and we can also rename it so it's uh, easy to identify. And we can click to confirm that. So we're going to click on sketch. We're going to go on this top work plane. Press N for normalize or normal and then you could click on top as well. We're going to start off with a center rectangle. And I'm going to hover over and select the origin and click and drag that out. I'm going to type in 100 and enter and 100 and enter to confirm that. So that's fully defined, there's no blue lines. And we could give this a name if we want to, so we can say, I don't know, base sketch, like so. And if you need to, once you've confirmed that, if you think you've made a mistake, you could go in and edit that and update the dimensions. And of course, if you've really gone wrong, you can click uh, delete as well. So if we have a look at the model then we can have a look at what it did next. So we started a sheet metal, okay, feature or part, and we've essentially thickened that sketch. So if we come over here to tutorial, okay, and we go up to the top, we have our sheet metal, okay, features, or the basic features. So if we click on sheet metal model, and we just spin this around to an angle, we have three different okay options in here which we're going to look at in this tutorial and okay in the next tutorial as well so there's convert where you can create a design say using extrudes okay and you can then convert that 3d design into a sheet metal okay part and we'll look at that next and you can also extrude and you can also thicken so if you click on extrude it says sketch or curve extrude. So in that instance, we can select okay these and we can start to okay extrude them. And like we have in the other options, okay, here you've got a blind, symmetric, and so on. And that gives you, you know, a very simple sort of design like that. Then you've got extra options down here if you want to go in a second direction. You can decide on the thickness, the bend radius. Okay, the K factor and so on. Okay, so you've got lots of examples and options down here. The corners we'll have a look at, okay, uh, in a second or so. Now actually, what I'm gonna do is rather than using extrude, in this case, I'm gonna use thicken. So I'm gonna thicken this and I'm gonna leave it, okay, with these uh, dimensions here. I could, if I wanted to, obviously come in here and, and thicken that. But that's probably five millimeters is probably too thick for this okay sort of size so i'm just going to leave that as one and a half millimeters it obviously depends okay the overall size of the design you're creating and what i'm going to do there is just confirm that like so if i need to i can go back into that and edit it okay and i can go back in the sketch as well and edit the sketch so that's the first bit done what I did then was I selected some of the edges and created what's called the flange. And if we have a look, okay, I created 40 millimeter flanges in a single direction, okay, 135 degrees. And once you've done this, you can change this, you can experiment and come up with your own design. But I'm gonna go 40 millimeters, okay, I'm gonna 135 degrees. So what we do then is we go up here and we go flange. And we click on an edge to start with. And as you can see, that gives us a 25 millimeter 
blind. Okay, so a single direction. Okay, as you can see here, uh, basically flange as it's sticking out there. If we look at this angle here, you can see what that's done and what it's created. It's taken the radius from the initial options that were in the sheet metal. So if you decide later that you want the radiuses in the design to change, okay, they will be in that first feature there. Then you can also okay override them as well and change those for individual okay flanges as well. The angle, okay, I can change like so, and I can flip that as you can see there. And you can change that to whatever you wish. The distance, again, you can decide on the distance. If we have a look in here, flange alignment, okay, if we, at the moment we've got inner, if we go outer, and we have a look, okay, you can see how that's changing from inner, okay, so that's the original sketch there, and then if you click on outer, you can see how it's going, okay, on the other side of the sketch. If you click middle, okay, it's placing the thickness of that flange, which is the same thickness as the base, and splitting that, okay, either side of the sketch, okay, or that edge where that we selected, basically. So it depends on what you want to achieve, and if you are creating, say, a couple of parts that are gonna to go together, it might be important, okay, to choose, okay, some of these options wisely when you are creating your design. But I'm just gonna go for, say, inner, like that. And if I confirm that, that will create a flange on that edge. If I want to create another flange, say, uh, over here, that's now a separate feature, so I can decide that, for example, I want that to be 50, so I want that to be taller, and I want that to be 45 degrees, and I can confirm that like that. So you can select individual okay, edges and add those flanges to it. However, if we delete that and go back into here, up here in this selection, okay, we can add more than one. And as you can see, when I select those, it starts to create okay, additional flanges. However, because I'm selecting these in the same feature, when I decide on, say, the distance, or basically the height of those, all of them, okay, will change at once, because it's, remember, it's the same, okay, feature. And again, if I change uh, the angle, okay, all of those will change at the same time. So I'm just gonna leave it, say, 135 degrees, I'm gonna type in, say, 40, just to increase that. And you'll see that, okay, update like that. If we zoom into here, okay, this is the sort of the corners, okay, where that, okay, design uh, is joining. And we do have some options which we can change that. And it's not in here, actually. You will find it, okay, in the original. So say I've set my, okay, distance and my angle, and I've decided to keep the radius the same as what I've set previously, I can confirm that. And when you're creating a sheet metal part, one thing you need to keep an eye on is here is the flat view. If you start adding flanges and when that would sort of fold out into a flat view, if there was an error, okay, you would start getting warnings up here and you'd also see uh, say if there's an intersect on here, so if a certain flange is intersecting another one. So it is important, okay, when you're starting to design and adding, you're checking, okay, this here. So that is simply viewed by clicking on that there. And when we look at, okay, more advanced sheet metal work, we can also come in here and start, okay, editing some of these, and we could give particular features, names and stuff like that. But we're going to keep this quite simple and leave this, okay, as it is. But it's good because it allows you to highlight both on the model. So if I click on here and fit that to screen, you can see the bend highlighted on the model as well as this sort of net, okay, flat view. And again, if okay, we've got radiuses and angles over like here, which are referencing, obviously, what we put in here. So if we come out of that, we can have a look, and I said we can change these options here. So if we go back into the sheet metal mode, 
and we scroll further down, further down here. You can see we've got all these options. And if we have a look, the radius, okay, that radius, which is appearing when we add the flanges, is set there, okay? And of course, in each individual flange, as we said before, you can override that. So if we come further down, we've got to corner, okay, relief type. And at the moment, it's, cast, uh, it's got rectangle scaled, okay? We can, so scaled is basically look at the scale factor, then you can change that. And if we look at here, if we look at, say, around all right you will not see it okay update live because it's a separate feature but if i click on the tick there you can see that so corner okay is gone you know is rounded rather than oops if we click on that one again rather than say if we go into here okay closed which sort of tries to close any gap okay and obviously you can see that there's very there's no gap between that. You can't even see anything through that. So it all depends on okay what you want for those um, corners. Okay, what you want it to look like. But not just that. Is maybe how you're actually going to use this design later on, and how you're going to join maybe some of those okay edges. So if we come back onto here, we've got closed. Um, I might actually create and click on simple and see what we've got there. Again, here you've got other options, okay, to do with, okay, the bend type, all right, and you've got different options in here, which we'll look at when we do more advanced sheet metal, and if you change your name, you'll see your model update, and of course, if anything comes with an error, it will say error, and you have to obviously change that back, but we're keeping this, okay, simple. If I click, okay, final, it does, okay, give me a preview, like that, so, Okay, round, there you go. All right, so final is a good good way to visualize it as well. Okay, which that's a, sort of a different feature than you normally get in different CAD programs. But that's good, so, okay, let's go simple. There you go, simple corner and update that. Okay, and then that will automatically, okay, update, okay, on here, the detail okay on these here as well we'll update right what we can do now is we can add like i did here we can add an additional flanges to create this top section i had selected those edges again and i chose 25 millimeters and 135 degrees so we come into here we select flange we're going to select these edges we're going to type in our angle and we can flip their direction and of course we can set okay the distance and again we've got options whether we want that to be inner okay outer and as well as middle depending on okay what you want to achieve and the dimensions again you can override okay the radius so instead of that Okay, you can put 0 0.5, for example, and you can see the radius is change. But I'm just going to keep the standard radius. This one, automatic mitre. You will see basically these corners have been, okay, sort of joined, not joined together, but they've been sort of uh, moved so they're very close together and there's a slight, okay, gap between them. If you want to tick that, okay, sometimes depending on what you've uh, created, it will move some of the edges apart. And I'll, sh I'll show you that actually on the okay previous thing. So we're gonna update that. And we can then check, okay, here, okay, our flat is sort of looking good to our net. If I go back into this original one, okay, you'll see if I untick that mitre, there you go. It doesn't might it doesn't bring those sort of edges close together. It doesn't close, okay, that sort of gap. Now that might be what you want to achieve, okay, however, you might want to tick that to, to close those gaps, like so. And then you'll see it'll update, okay, both of those features, all right? Now the other thing that you do need to realise as well is once I, um, if I want to add any, say, additional 
features this such as like holes or anything like that I need to do that while the sheet model is active so what I'm not going to do okay is this All right, I'm going to do this wrong okay if okay I want those features to appear on the net it will appear on the 3d view okay but it wouldn't appear on that so I'm going to click finish it's going to say what do you want to finish okay that's what I want to finish and tick it if I now come in here and go right actually I want holes on here and I'm going to put a hole in there and I'm just going to dimension that say eight millimeters and I'm going to dimension it from that side to be if I can click the right point say 10 millimeters okay so I'm just making that up just to show you if I go on here extrude and I'm going to go remove and yeah okay so say if I wanted that to go through both of those like that okay and I think right I've created that feature excellent I go to my, my net flat view it's not on there because I'm applying that feature after okay I finished the sheet metal feature so what I'd have to do is do that extrude okay before okay finishing it if I drag that okay before okay it may come up with an error depending on what it's been what's referenced so if I go back in time here oh, that's why because I didn't drag the sketch so if I drag the sketch first and then drag that okay it is before finishing it and fingers crossed when I click on this there you go I've got those okay holes there and the reason that's got an oval shape is because of that basically because of that angle there when I've cut through there okay so that's very very important if you want to add any features such as like slots and holes and things like that okay especially if you're using things like extrude okay or the hole feature and then say I want to create a pattern of this okay around there all right it's really important that they go before you finish it okay so what we've learned about there is how to thicken the base how to select the edges determine the distances and angles and uh, create okay um, those flanges we've also looked at how you can control okay these corners here we've had additional flanges at the top and we've also looked at okay uh, how to mitre those so it brings those edges closer together and then finally we've talked about okay the importance of applying additional features okay before you finish the sheet metal if you want those okay to be applied okay on like I said the net the flat drawing thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.